Hey guys, so it's pretty much been proven from historical data that you will get an average yearly return of around about 6% from the stock market after taking into account inflation. But if you pick your own stocks and you're good at it, you can get a higher yearly return than that on the stock market as long as you know what you're doing and as long as you can pick winning stocks. So guys, pretty much today with you, I want to share my investing strategy and how I go about picking the stocks that I want to invest in. These are a few things that I check before buying a stock. And look, I've only been in the stock market for about, oh, what, a year and a half or so. And you can see on the screen here, it is working out pretty favorably for me. I'm seeing a lot higher than a 6% return in a year. Uh, right now, my stock portfolio is up around about 66% as at recording this video. Obviously, yeah, there isn't a lot of data for yearly returns for me because I've only been in the stock market for a year and a half, like I'm saying. But I'm pretty confident uh, with the methods that I use to pick stocks, I can average a lot higher return than the average at 6% a year. So guys, like I said, I'm gonna share with you today the few rules or the few things that I follow before buying a stock or investing in a company. We'll get into the video here now, but just before we do, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the content and subscribe for more of it. Let's get into it. Now, the number one thing that I do and the number one thing that you should do, and I cannot stress this enough, is please do your own research and ideally invest in companies that are in your area of confidence. Don't just jump into a stock because a guy on the internet's telling you to buy it. Please do your own research, take your own time to have a look at the company and determine whether you do want to buy it or not. And with your area of confidence or circle of confidence, right? What I mean by that is don't invest in a company that you have no idea what they do or no idea about their business model or how the business works. It's like buying a home, right? You're gonna go to the inspection and have a look at the house before you decide to buy it or put an offer in at all. You need to make sure that everything's right and everything's up to your standards before you're gonna put any money in it or before you go ahead with that kind of decision. Because at the end of the day, stocks are an investment and you need to know where you're putting your money into, right? Because you could very well lose a large amount of that money or all of it. That's the risk that you take with investing in stocks. Obviously with some stocks, that risk is far less than others, but it's still a risk nonetheless. And like I said, I suggest that you stay within your area or circle of confidence, right? Me personally, I'm not gonna go and buy a pharmaceutical company or a pharmaceutical stock. Yeah, I know that they, they make drugs and they make medicine, but I don't know how it's made. I don't know how, how they make money or all that other complicated stuff that comes with that. So I'm not gonna invest in one of those companies just as it's out of my circle of confidence. You need to understand how they make their money, what their business model is at the end of the day. And please guys, do not buy a stock just because some guy on the internet told you to. Because if you do that, more often than not, you are gonna get burnt in the long run. All right, the second thing that I look at is the financials. Part of the research that you're gonna do when you're looking to buy a stock is looking at the company's financials and financial reports. This is what I'm saying, right? If you're wanting to pick individual stocks, you have to put in the work, but I do assure you and I do promise you, as long as you put in the hard work, you are gonna get rewarded in the long run. Man, these cars are so annoying. But this involves looking at the company's numbers, right? Being able to read and being able to analyze the balance sheets of companies and income statements. The income statement and the balance sheet are the most crucial things to look at in my opinion. You can also look at the cash flow statement as well. I don't wanna get into this here too much in detail here today, but the income statement is pretty much showing you how much revenue the business has made against all of their, minus all of their expenses to get you the net profit figure for that period. And you'll need to say, have a look at their most recent income statement and have a look at it for previous periods, previous quarters, previous years, to see where if you can see any kind of trends, you know, is the company continuing to grow profits larger and larger and larger each year. Obviously, if the net profit is getting worse and worse every year, that's generally not a good sign. And you need to be able to put these numbers together with the words. You need to find out why this is happening, right? Balance sheet shows the company's total assets and total liabilities. It's also important that you understand this and be able to read the balance sheet, right? Because if a company is too loaded up on debt, and if economic activity slows like it is right now with the whole pandemic situation, they aren't getting any money coming in, right? They've got this massive debt that's racking up. They have no way to pay it. Then what happens then? They have to start selling off parts of the business. 
After that, still needed, if they still have a debt left over, bankrupt, your investment is completely gone. So in my opinion, the financials are definitely a crucial part to look at. And the third thing I like to have a look at is the management team of the company. You need to make sure that the management team of the company is solid, right? They're the ones that are pretty much running the business at the end of the day. They have the main say of where the business is going from here, right? And they're the one that's going to keep track of the business and make sure it's heading in the right direction. So if you're investing your money into this company, you need to be confident that they are going to do a good job to be able to get you some nice, nice returns. You need to make sure that they're obviously honest, right? And they give you the good and bad when it comes to earnings reports and earnings periods and not tell you something false or misleading just to, for you to stay on board uh, with the company and continue investing. And if there is something negatively impacting the business, they need to pretty much have a plan to be able to overcome that. It is ideal that the management team is already proven or, you know, they have had significant experience. Elon Musk, right, great example. One of the guys that helped start up PayPal, took over Tesla, confident because in the past he has had experience of managing a big company and growing a small company into a big one. So definitely something important to watch. And the fourth thing that I look at is the valuation of the company and the stock price. Obviously, you need to have a look at the valuation of the company and the price that you're going to get it at, right? You could have done all your research and the company could be looking great, right? But the stock price or the company is trading at a very high premium. Is it going to be worth it investing in a stock that's overvalued or overpriced? Or can you just wait until you get it at a good discount? A lot of the time with stocks and the stock market, right, we see a lot of future news or future expectations already priced into a stock price. So it's already trading at a price where it's already expecting these kind of things to happen in the future. So you need to determine if it's going to be okay to buy the company at the price right now, whether it's going to be worth it or not. It's definitely a question that you have to ask yourself. Now, there are definitely a lot of tools and a lot of numbers out there to help determine what is a fair value of a stock or determine whether it is overvalued or undervalued. And I'm not going to get into that here in this video, but pretty much I like to have a look at the price to sales ratio and the forward PE. Definitely some good numbers to look at, and this is also an important step. Anyway, guys, that's all the tips that I have here today. If you are looking to buy individual stocks, these are the rules that I follow, and you may want to take them into consideration as well as a lot of these things are pretty crucial to look at before you invest any money in any kind of company. Please, if anything from this video, take away the first step where you need to do your own research because that's crucial. Don't buy a stock because someone's telling you to. Also, another thing that you should take away from this video is hitting the like button. That would be great. But obviously, at the end of the day, if you can pick winning stocks and if you can determine a stock that's undervalued and you see a great future for it ahead, uh, then you are going to beat the average yearly return of a stock market. I can guarantee that. Anyway, guys, that's all from me here today. Like I said, please hit the like button. Uh, hit the subscribe circle here if you want to watch more of my content. Uh, I think there's a playlist here and a video here if you want to check those out. And that's all I have. You have a good one.